Hello, my name is Magnus Petersen. This talk is about expense ratios in index funds. It is based on this book and you can click on the image or the link below the video. An index fund tries to match the performance of a stock index such as the S&P 500, which covers 500 of the largest companies in the United States. You pay fees and commissions when you first invest in the fund. It is very important that these fees and commissions are very low. For example, if the fees are 10% of the amount you invest, then it will take you more than a year on average to earn it back from the S&P 500. If the fees are 1% of the amount you invest, then it will take you a few months on average to earn them back from the S&P 500. The company that manages the index fund also has expenses for buying and selling stocks, pay employees, offices, accounting, etc. These expenses are paid by the fund's investors through deductions from the fund's invested assets. This means there is less invested in the index, such as the S&P 500. A small annual expense will compound into a massive expense over time. So it is very important that the expense ratio is very low. So let's use Google to find the expense ratios of a few index funds. We type in Vanguard VOO, which is a ticker symbol for a ETF. And we click. We then search for our expense ratio and we find it down here. It is 0.05%. This is in late April 2015. So now let's search for another popular ETF. It's called the Spider Spy. And again, we search for the expense ratio and we get two expense ratios, the gross and the net. And it turns out that they have given a discount. So right now the expense ratio is slightly less than it normally is. <clears throat> and the, normally it is 0.1098%. And now it's only 0.0945%. We will say it is 0.10% just to make it simple. Okay, so let's look at an example for the first one, which was Vanguard's VOO. It had an expense ratio of 0.05%. So assume we invest $10,000 and the S&P 500 returns 9% per year. Without expenses, the $10,000 would grow to 132000 $677 after 30 years. If the fund's expense ratio is 0.05%, then we pay $5 in expenses the first year, so we only get $10,895 instead of $10,900. That's okay, that's not too bad. But after 30 years, the $10,000 would only be worth $130,863, and we would have paid a total of $1,814 in expenses. This is not just 30 years multiplied by $5, which would be $150. The reason it grows so large is that it compounds. So the formula for calculating it is like this. We have the invested amount, $10,000. We have 1 plus the return on the S&P 500, which we have assumed is 9%. Then we subtract the expense ratio, which is 0.05%. And then we take this to the power of 30, which is the number of years that we are investing. And this comes out to almost $131,000. So the expense ratio compounds exponentially through the years, and that is why it becomes so massive over time. So let's look at the other example where the expense ratio was 0.10%, which was for the spider spy. So we again assume the S&P 500 returns 9% per year. And after 30 years, the $10,000 has grown to $129,000 and a bit. Expenses in the first year were only $10, and that's okay. But after 30 years, the total expenses would be $3,604. This is about twice as much as it was for the Vanguard fund. These are the exact same products. 
So why would you pay twice as much for one? Now let's look at the average expense ratio for all funds that invest in the S&P 500. So we again assume that we invest $10,000 and the S&P 500 returns 9% per year. So after 30 years, we would have almost $133,000 before expenses. According to the research website called Morningstar, the average expense ratio is 0.36% for an S&P 500 fund. This means the $10,000 would only have grown to about $120,000 after 30 years, and the total expenses would be $12,500. This means the average S&P 500 fund underperforms the actual index by almost 9.5% after 30 years. This is absolutely insane. And this is not even the worst fund. This is the average fund. Why would you pay so much more when you get the exact same investment product? It doesn't make any sense. And why do they get away with it? Because you don't know that you pay so much. You think that you pay a little amount each year and that is fine. No, it compounds exponentially over time. They are rubbing you blind. So the conclusion is that index funds try to match the performance of an index such as the S&P 500. You should invest in the fund with the lowest commissions and expense ratios. This is, it's not just very important, it's extremely important when you are investing for many years or decades because the expenses compound and become massive over time. I give more details in the book and you can click on the image or the link below the video.